I'm here with Ron Carner at the beautiful 20th gala of the Maccabea game. Um, Ron, this is a very beautiful, exciting evening, and I just wanted to ask you, what are you most looking forward to happening tonight? Well, I'm looking forward that people have a good time. I'm looking forward that they learn about Maccabi U USA, they learn about the Maccabea, they learn about Maccabi World Union and what we really do, which is uh, we produce the world's third largest international sporting event. Uh, however, uh, it's, it's such an overwhelming project and we're just the American team. So what I'm looking forward to people understanding that we're more than just sports, we're about the culture and uh, educating people about the state of Israel and the importance of Israel within our lives and we do it through sports, which is most exciting. I think a lot of our JBS audience loves sports, uh, but I'm guessing most of us have not had the privilege of attending the Maccabea, so or Maccabi. So first of all, maybe you could just break down what the difference is for our audience, and what is it like when you're there in person? Okay, let's talk about the word Maccabi and the word Maccabea. The word Maccabi is an organizational word. You only use the word Maccabea only once, and when you're talking about the games in Israel every four years, that's the Maccabea. When you're talking about anything else, Maccabi USA, Maccabi Europe, any other games like the Pan Am, Maccabi games, that's when you use the Maccabi. But Maccabea is like Olympiad would be Maccabea. So that's just to break that down. So to give you an idea of the, uh, of the breadth of this organization, all right, last Maccabea, 2013 in Israel, all right, there was the 19th Maccabea. We had 77 nations, 8,500 participants, as I say, the world's third, third largest international sporting event, uh, 77 nations. USA brought a team of 1,102, big team, in 112 different um, teams in 37 different sports. So as you can understand, it's a, an overwhelming project. But that's what we do. And that's why we, and why do we do it? because we bring Jewish athletes from all over the world together and they learn so much from each other. It's just amazing. Ron, I have a question for you. Birthright Israel has received a lot of, um, a lot of praise for the effect that going to Israel has had on young Jews. What is it like for the young athletes who go to Israel for the first time with you? Fascinating. I hear, I mean, hundreds of times from athletes who have participated in the Maccabean during my 30 years involvement. Greatest experience of my life, life-changing experience, something I will never forget. One of my favorite stories about, about that has to do with our Pan American Games. I meet a young man about five years ago. He's in his 40s, and he tells me that he came with us to Uruguay and played junior basketball. Okay, I said, thank you, Jason. And he said, no, 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 let me tell you. The greatest experience in my life. He was 16 years old at the time. I said, well, I said, Jason, well, wait a minute. You were 16, we played basketball in Uruguay at the Pan Am Games. Those, they didn't have the greatest facilities. You played basketball in the floor of a church with the basket on, on the wall. And you're saying it's a great, he said, Ronnie, it was the greatest experience in my life. Stuart Weitzman, now you know who Stuart Weitzman is. Every woman knows who Stuart Weitzman is. Came with us and he played uh, uh, table tennis. Very, very fine table tennis player. All right, I meet with him afterwards and says, Ron, yeah, I have to tell you, greatest experience in my life. I said, Stuart, come on, Stuart, you've got these, this business, this worldwide business. You travel all over the world. You're, 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 you're a very, very prominent individual. This was the greatest experience in your life? Yes, it was. It's just fantastic. Ron, thank you so much to Maccabi USA for bringing all these young Jews to Israel to experience Israel firsthand for themselves and really for everything that Maccabea International does. We wish you all the success. We've had you on JBS and we look forward to having you on JBS again. Ron Carner, thank you. Thank you, Ellie, and thank you for giving, a, giving us the opportunity to explain to people exactly what we do. That was so much more than just sports, so much more. I'm here with Rick Barry, Basketball Hall of Fame. What an honor to be here tonight with Rick Barry at the Maccabi Gala. Rick, I just want to ask you a question. So what brings you here tonight? Well, I was uh, asked if I would be a, a part of the festivities by Arnie Fielko, who happens to be the executive director of the NBRPA, the National Basketball Retired Players Association. And I've actually been involved with, uh, with an event like this because out in San Francisco, I actually hosted the event several years ago. 
had a lot of fun. My buddy Mark Spitz was one of the honorees, and Lenny Krasselberg, and a number of other uh, good athlete friends of mine. So I had a good time doing that. It's certainly for a good cause. Um, I'm not Jewish, but I, I'm on the board of a Jewish charity called the American Friends of Migdal Lor, and I met the most amazing man I've ever met in my life, uh, Rabbi uh, Grossman. It's that Grossman who's over there and saves the lives of millions of kids. Uh, I, you know, he's like a Mother Teresa person. I joked with him and said, you know, Rabbi, if you were Catholic, they probably have made you a saint already. So I, I'm, I'm all for any group or organization that tries to do things to help those less fortunate. Rick, that is really beautiful and inspiring. And so I'm just wondering, um, have you been to Israel yourself yet? Yes, I actually took uh, Julius Irving, the great uh, Dr. J, over with me, and we did some clinics to help raise some money for Migdal Or, and that was a great experience. And that one, I had, that's when I had the opportunity to meet Rabbi Grossman. My son was only about 11 at the time, my youngest son, and he got to meet the rabbi. And the interesting thing was the impact that he even had on my son. When my son had to write a paper about the person who has who had influenced him more than anyone else wasn't me he wrote about rabbi grossman which i thought was pretty remarkable that is that is truly remarkable and really beautiful so rick i just want to ask you something what is your your advice to aspiring young athletes and especially the young women and men who participate in the maccabia international well number one is to get a great education because you may not be able to be an athlete who gets paid a lot of money to be able to perform in your particular sport. So you have to be prepared. So that's the first thing. The second thing from an athletic standpoint is that you have to learn the fundamental principles and concepts of whatever your sport is. It's like the foundation of a building. You can't build a skyscraper on a small foundation it's going to topple over. So the more versed you are and the more knowledge you have in the fundamental principles of what your sport is, the greater the opportunity for you to maximize the full potential and perhaps the God-given abilities that you have so that you can actually be as good as you can possibly be. And then with that, always give your best effort. Don't be afraid to fail because smart people learn from their failures and just always give your best effort. All right, I think that's a message really that we can share with all kids who have interest in anything. Rick Barry, thank you so much for joining us on JBF. My pleasure. I'm here with Lisa Fishman, who is a Maccabea gold medalist, multi times over. We'll find out more about that. And actually played professionally for an Israeli basketball team. So let's start from the beginning. Um, when was your first Maccabea and what was it like? Uh, my first experience was in 2005. I was a junior in college. And uh, I didn't want to even try out for the team. I went to Long Island, tried out for the team, made the team with amongst um, many different other players that were amazing. So that's why I didn't want to try out. So there's a lot of uh, really talented Jewish professional athletes. Um, so that's where my career with Maccabi started. I played in 2005 in Maccabi, uh, 2006. Um, we went to Australia. I played in Australia twice. I played in Brazil. Um, and I also played professionally over in Israel. What would you say is the highlight of your experience um, when, when you were playing on the team? What was it like? The people. I can't say enough about the people that you meet, the people that you play with, um, and being Jewish. Learning about people that are Jewish from every country that you didn't even know had Jewish people, um, let alone athletes, is just amazing. I have the chills every time I think about it. So the opening ceremonies are something that I keep with me probably for the rest of my life and hopefully breed Jewish athletes myself that they can experience it too. That's great. And Lisa, can you describe your first time there? We'd love to know what that's like. You know, what is it like the first time you're a young Jewish woman from Long Island, you didn't want to try out, but you made it, and then what? So uh, we touched ground in Israel. We had a chartered flight, and we were greeted with, um, you know, a klezmer band, and just everyone was welcoming us with, opening ar with open arms. And it was almost like being greeted by family. Like, everyone just made us feel so comfortable. Um, and that first experience in Israel, I think, changed my life. It really did. I mean, I went to Hebrew school my whole life, and I learned about Israel, but in my brain it was like deserts and sand, and that's not what it is at all. And even when I went back to play professionally, everyone, again, just welcomed us with open arms. So. And Lisa, when you and I were talking earlier, you said that you credit Maccabi with the fact that you did make it to the Israeli team. So tell us exactly how that happened. So Maccabi USA opened up so many doors for me, which is why I can never say no to do anything for them, hence this interview. Um, but I, um, you know, playing in 2005 when I was a junior in college, we were immediately offered opportunities to go back to the country and play and represent Israel. Um, I finished college, as for my mom. And um, yeah, it just you know exposed us to that opportunity to be able to go back. And 
The most exciting thing now for me was coaching players in the last Maccabi on, you know, being able to coach them off the court and having, you know, four of them, four plus, go back and play professionally just like I did, you know. It's just kind of great to always give back and give that push for the love of Israel. That's beautiful, Lisa. And so I think my final question to you is, what's your message to any young viewers who may be watching or parents or grandparents who may be watching? What do you think, you know, is there any encouraging words you might have for them? Just Follow your dreams, you know, anything is possible. Like I said, I didn't even want to try out. I, you know, tried everything possible not to go and I went and I made the team and I'm here today talking to you about it. So just follow your dreams, keep working hard. All right, follow your dreams here on JBS. Thank you so much for joining us. Building Jewish pride through sports. That's what Maccabi USA is all about. And for me, that Jewish pride burned brightly in 2004 and what I consider the defining moment of my broadcasting career. It was at the Summer Olympics in Athens, Greece. I was working for WNBC TV. I was covering local stories and national ones, but suddenly I found myself covering a global story and one that bridged sports and news. One that captured the imagination of people everywhere. Gal Friedman became the first Israeli athlete to capture an Olympic gold medal. He did it in the big sport of windsurfing. Israel took extraordinary pride in the achievement, and there was a sense of vindication as well. Yes, memories of the massacre in Munich in 1972 still serve as a somber reminder of bigotry and hatred in the world. While the state of Israel exploded with joy and Friedman dominated the news, the young gold medalist was locked in a safety deposit box of fear because of Munich, because of suicide bombers, because of intense security, and the constant threat that someone would try to murder him, Gal Friedman was protected, indeed secluded, bubble-like, from all reporters and anyone who tried to get an interview with him. Friedman was surrounded by security guards and remained totally out of sight. At the same time, I was assigned to cover the story by my producer, Lawrence Spencer. I called Tel Aviv in Jerusalem to find the name of the Israeli press representative in Athens, and within an hour found out the hotel where Friedman was staying and the Israeli, Israeli delegation was as well. I raced over there with my cameraman to begin schmoozing the group. I got the press attaché to come outside the hotel and told him I was a Jew from New Jersey. And this was not only an important story to me, but to everyone in the New York market. I told him my mother was born in Poland and escaped the wrath of Hitler in 1937 and came with her family to America and how proud I was to tell her story. My stories went nowhere. My pleas fell on deaf ears. That's when being a bar mitzvah served me well. In a moment of inspiration, surrounded by security guards and in the company of the Israeli Olympic team, I belted out my Haftorah, Mahar Hodesh, the eve of the new moon, that wonderful story about the friendship between David, later king of Israel, and Jonathan, son of the present king of Israel. I never could read Hebrew well, but oh, could I memorize. Somehow, in some way, that melody melted the cordon of fear which surrounded the Israeli delegation. Suddenly, they invited me inside the hotel, and I was granted the first one-on-one -on -one interview with Friedman. The story not only led our sports cast but was the top story on WNBC-TV's entire newscast. Gal and I talked about everything, from the Munich Olympics to the turmoil in his homeland to what it would be like on the medal stand that night to hear Hatikva, the Israeli national anthem. So in Athens, Greece, 4,500 miles from home, in the cradle of Western civilization, I was never prouder to be an American, never prouder to be a Jew. Right now, let's learn a little bit more about the work of Maccabi USA and how they change lives by building Jewish pride through sports.
In July 2013, at the World Maccabea Games, over 9,000 Jewish athletes representing 75 nations gathered in Israel for the world's third largest international sporting event. For one of the few times in your life, you're gonna march in to a, a gathering of 30 to 40,000 people, all of whom are proud of the fact that you are Jewish. To look around and just, you know, country after country where I was just like in shock that they had Jewish athletes, that they traveled so far to be here. And it was just, you know, it was really an incredible, incredible moment. And, I, you know, I'll remember it forever. I feel like you're a rock star. I, I still have the chills. <laughs> I have the goosebumps just thinking about it. To have the opportunity to wear your country on the front of your shirt and then to be surrounded by Jewish athletes from all over the world. That was one of the coolest and unique, most unique moments in my life. Um, just to see thousands of people cheering your name, or cheering for you, your country, and other countries all coming together for the Jewish community. It's really a, a special moment. You just have so much pride for your country and you know that everybody in that stadium is Jewish and that's something that most athletes have never experienced before. From the breathtaking opening ceremony to the 5,000 individual athletic competitions, the Maccabea is a celebration of sports, culture, heritage, and pride. These games remind us that our common heritage is greater than the cultural divides among the countries we each call home. The hearing Jewish people speak Italian and Spanish and Portuguese and French, I mean, it's, a, it's something, it's an amazing experience. Maccabi USA organizes a team of the best American Jewish athletes that in past years have included Olympic gold medalists Mark Spitz, Wendy Weinberg Weil, Lenny Kraselberg, Jason Lezak, Garrett Weber Gale, Mitch Gaylord, Ernie Grunfeld, and NBA basketball star Danny Shays. Maccabi USA is now affiliated with the United States Olympic Committee and has been designated as one of its multi-sport organizations. The first Maccabea was held in 1932, and since 1953, the games have taken place in Israel every four years. Sanctioned by the International Olympic Committee, the Maccabea has grown steadily in the number of participants and variety of sports offered. I just want to go try for swimming personal bests and to have a lot of fun. I was an Olympic qualifier, I played in the Paralympics. To me, this just feels more like a community. It just feels great and it's fantastic to be here. In 2013, the 19th Maccabea featured 40 sports and Team USA, 1,102 members strong, consisted of 112 separate men's and women's teams in open, juniors, masters, and para-athlete divisions. But the competition is only a part of what the Maccabea experience is all about. Our educational and cultural program, Israel Connect, is held prior to the games. This journey of discovery brings athletes to the country's historic sites, from Masada, to Yad Vashem. From the Western Wall to the Dead Sea, athletes are immersed in the Jewish homeland, the beauty of its geography, its people, and heritage. You can really relate to everybody because everybody has a Jewish identity. The Western Wall is the highlight of my trip. I've been, I've been twice already this trip, and it's, you feel comforted, you feel welcome, you feel like everything is answered at that one moment. For many, Israel Connect provides an opportunity to renew the bond with their Jewish roots by becoming a bar or bat mitzvah at the Phyllis Megerman B'nai Mitzvah Ceremony. For some, it is for the very first time. I partnered up with the uh, U.S. hockey team, and the guys were amazing. The one guy, the goalie, uh, put me on his back and carried me down the steps of Masada so that I would get the entire experience. The whole Israel Connect program just helped me find all these great new friends and, you know, be home. The Maccabee Games are a life-altering experience for the athletes, supporters, and volunteers. 
participants come away with a new perspective of themselves as athletes, as Americans, and as Jews. My daughter's here uh, with me. We're playing together. I got to play with my mom, and we won the silver medal, and it was an incredible experience being able to be here with her. We didn't know each other before, and now we're all best friends. That really changed my life. You know, it was the first opportunity that I had ever had to combine two really important parts of, of my identity, athletics and, uh, and being Jewish. I think I need to stop for a second and really think about all of the things that I've learned, because I have learned so much. A couple months ago, I was thinking about what it would mean to come here, and really I had no idea. I thought, you know, as going to the Olympics, it would, it would be another sporting event that I wanted to compete at. But I will tell you that, and I've told many people this, so far, my experience here has been one of the greatest experiences of my life. I can't imagine a better way to create camaraderie and understanding and appreciation of Jewish heritage and culture than an organization like this. It's amazing. It's a once-in-a-lifetime experience. I am a huge believer that sport is the great international language. It connects people emotionally, physically, on every level. It allows us to speak a common language. It infuses your soul with unity, with commitment, with pride. I'm proud. I'm proud to be an American, and I'm proud to be a Jew. What begins as a fun-filled competitive sporting event becomes a journey of discovery, friendship, Jewish awareness, and pride. A fulfillment of a lifelong dream and the beginning of a commitment to the state of Israel. I'm very happy to be here. I'm very happy to be here because this is a very special event. You know, I just came from another event where we honored a person who brought to New York a very special theater group from Israel. And I bring it up because it's very relevant for the purpose of tonight's gathering. That group that he brought to New York was the most unique theater group in the whole world. What was unique about it? Its entire cast of men and women from Israel were both deaf and blind. Think about it. They're deaf and they're blind and they have to perform for 90 minutes on stage. They have to dance, they have to sing, and they even bake bread on stage. And how do they communicate with each other? How do they know when it's their time to go? They're cute. Well, they touch each other. 1,500 times they touch each other throughout the show, never missing a cue, 1,500 times. That's why the group's name is Please Do Touch. That's the name of the group. Now, why do I tell you this? Why am I bringing it up? Because the Maccabea Games, the third largest gathering of sports in the world, after the Olympic Games and the Pan American Games, that attracts, on average, 10,000 athletes, from 70, 80 countries is all about the refusal to accept the limitations that people try to put on our people. Throughout history, the first Maccabea Games took place in 1932, seven years before World War II broke out, and nine years before the devastation of our people started. And look at, this, look at what it is today. A celebration of excellence, a celebration of our people's spirit, a celebration of our belief in a better future. And many people refer to the Maccabea Games as the Jewish Olympics. Let me tell you, there are many people that participate in the Maccabea Games that are not Jewish. For example, Arab Israelis. We are very, very proud of the ability of the Maccabea Games to be inclusive. And I have to say that even here tonight, we have people from all walks of life. Israelis and non-Israelis, Jews and non-Jews. Under the leadership of my dear friend, Ron Corner, our honoree tonight, the Maccabea Games is not just about winning medals. It's about educating people 
It's about people, it's about giving people the tools to succeed. It's about guaranteeing and safeguarding a better future for our children and for our grandchildren. One Corner has been a pillar in this community, has been a great supporter, not only of the State of Israel, but of the Jewish people in general. And the fact that he's honored today by the Maccabee Games, let me tell you, we will be celebrating the 20th Maccabee largely thanks to the efforts of great people like Ron Karner. Thank you so much, Ron, for everything you've done. Warm greetings from Jerusalem to the U.S. launch of the 20th Maccabiah Games. It's always exciting to host the games. We're very proud to do so. Uh, Israel is proud of the fact that athletes from around the world gather here. We remember the Maccabees. We remember their great fortitude, their courage, their bravery, their prowess. And that spirit is uh, represented in the modern state of Israel in the rekindling of that relationship between the Jewish people and the Jewish state. Uh, I think it gets a, a powerful expression in these games uh, because sport brings out the best in people. Uh, and I think that it brings out the best in the Jewish people. So we look forward to receiving you here in Israel, in Jerusalem, for the Maccabiah Games. We're waiting for you. Please come. To hear firsthand about how Maccabi USA and the Maccabiah Games make such an impact on all involved, I would like to introduce Sarah O'Dell, a member of the Maccabi USA Open Women's Squash Team at the 18th Maccabea Games in 2009. Sarah, would you please come forward? I think often about my time in Israel. There are seminal moments in our lives, events that we can look back on and point to with hindsight as pivotal. I became the person that stands before you because I participated in the 2009 Maccabea Games. To this day, when I am stressed out by deadlines or interpersonal relationships, I will often lean back into my chair, close my eyes, and remember standing on top of Masada, the hot desert wind blowing, and watching 1,000 of my teammates walk down the trail. Or I think about the first night we had free and how we ended up at a small nightclub on the beach listening to Michael Jackson and sweating profusely as we danced under the fluorescent night sky. That's how I think of Israel. Everything is a little brighter. Jerusalem glows gold at night. The salt water is a little saltier, and you are a little more yourself. I think particularly for someone like me, who spent most of her adolescence struggling with her religious identity, I felt a little more like myself in Israel. My father is Jewish and my mother is not. She did not convert when she married my father, but she raised my brother and I to be curious people, people who were to question everything and embrace all of our heritage. It was her, and not my father, who called me one afternoon when I was in college and said, do you know about this Maccabee Games? I think if you can make the team, you should do it. When I was in fifth grade, I had proclaimed myself Jewish. Neither of my parents seemed phased by this, but my mother said to me, people have died so that you can say that. You need to find something out about it. So I enrolled in Hebrew school at Temple Beth Israel, which was about 10 minutes from our house. I was several years behind my peers and was being tutored by one of the middle schoolers in Hebrew so that I could catch up. I found it frustrating and futile. On top of the seeming impossibility of, of catching up on my Hebrew, the temple was unaccepting of having the child of a mixed marriage become B'nai Mitzvah. My ethics teacher, one day exasperated by all of my questions, said to me in front of my classmates, you are the daughter of a mixed marriage. Does your mother feel betrayed by your decision to become Jewish? Of course, my mother did not feel betrayed but I did. I wanted nothing more than to claim my Judaism and proudly tell people who I was. But that always seemed like an impossibility. My love of Judaism continued to be unrequited through boarding school and college. I was never quite Jewish enough for anyone. I wasn't bat mitzvahed, my mother wasn't Jewish, I didn't know Hebrew, 
I couldn't recite the Passover prayers without a transliterated text in front of me. But all of that changed when I arrived in Israel in July of 2009. Nobody asked me to prove that I was really Jewish. During the first 10 days of the trip when we toured the country, the squash team was paired with the crew team. After talking to one of the rowers who was my age and competing during the year for Cornell University, she revealed to me that nobody in her family knew they were Jewish until about six months ago when one of her grandparents made a startling revelation. The Israelis seemed to find my decision to play in the Maccabee games as sufficient evidence that I was a member of the tribe. But what struck me more than anything was at the first Shabbat dinner when we moved to our competition site. We were surrounded by the Argentinian men's soccer team and the South African and Australian rugby team. All day we had struggled to communicate. The Argentinians spoke little English and none of us spoke Spanish. But when we started to sing the Shabbos prayers, everyone sang the same tune. Everyone knew the words, some of us better than others. When people ask me to describe my experience playing in the Maccabee games, I tell them two things. It was the pinnacle experience of my athletic career and that it was the first time in my life where I felt a part of something larger than myself. Whether that's God or religion, I don't know. But for this reason, I've been trying to get back to Israel ever since. And now, as a coach of young female athletes, I am encouraging every Jewish athlete that I work with to apply. That change still echoes through my own life as I continue to figure out what it means for me to call myself a Jew. But because of my participation in the 2009 Maccabee Games, I no longer hesitate or struggle to name who I am. My name is Sarah O'Dell. I'm 28 years old. I grew up in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I'm a teacher, a writer, an athlete, and a Jew. I love the country of Israel, and I am a part of the tribe. I host Shabbat dinners for my students at Miss Porter's school. I've encouraged Jewish athletes on my squash team to apply for the games, and I will proselytize my Maccabee USA experience to anyone who will listen. Because of three weeks in Israel, I have committed myself to my Jewish faith and the land and the people of Israel. And it is my own understanding and commitment, thanks to Maccabee USA, that feeds my soul and makes me confident to call myself proudly a Jew. For me personally, um, it was uh, an interesting route to get here. I uh, originally am from Ukraine and came here in the late 80s. I grew up in the former Soviet Union. Although I'm Jewish, we didn't really speak in Soviet Union about being Jewish. You couldn't talk about that back uh, during the communist years. So really not until I came to America that I really felt comfortable even mentioning my culture or my Jew Jewishness. And I went to the North American Maccabi Games back in 1989, and that was for the first time I was um, surrounded by so many Jewish teen teens and adults, and it made me incredibly proud of who I was. And everyone talked about Israel. Everyone talked about Maccabiah and uh, it really stuck with me. It was something that I wanted to do one day. Um, in 97, I was approached to go to the Maccabiya, but unfortunately at that time, you know, my, I, was, I, I was taking a different path in my career. I was really coming up and up and coming uh, swimmers, not just in the United States, but in the world and had an opportunity to go, to go to world championships. So I decided to choose world championships uh, instead of Maccabiya. And uh, eventually I, had, I went to world championships in 90, in, at the end of 97, 
went on to Sydney at the Olympic Games in 2000 and was fortunate to win three gold medals there. And, uh, and then I came to a choice again in 2001, whether I go to World Championship or I go to Maccabi in Israel. And the choice was pretty easy for me. I was going to go to Israel. And uh, what an experience that was. Uh, a life-changing, life-changing experience to be able to be in Israel, to be in the company of hundreds, thousands of people, uh, all of them proud being Jews, coming from every walk of life, coming from various countries around the world, being in Israel, celebrating Judaism, supporting the state of Israel, all of that was extremely, extremely humbling for me. I have never felt so proud. And to top it all off, having an opportunity to carry the United States flag into the opening ceremony and lead the delegation uh, was uh, one of the greatest moments of my life. What, what really stood out for me in 2001, I, came, I went back in 2005, uh, it was just the, the camaraderie, the impact it, had, it was making on, on people that were coming to Israel for the first time. And it was a life-changing impact. And uh, I was so proud to be part of it. I was so proud that I had a role in helping people get there, that, um, you know, it was something that I gave myself a promise that this is, this is an impact that uh, is bigger than just me. This is an impact if in any way you can influence others uh, to make a trip and to be part of this an incredible experience, to be part of this cultural experience that is just absolutely life-changing, that you need to make an impact. Uh, in 2013, I went uh, as part of the Maccabi USA and Maccabi World Union and took part in the opening ceremony. And uh, I was fortunate enough to stand on the metal pedestal at the Olympic Games and listening to the Star Spangled Banner playing in my honor when I won the Olympic gold medal. But I can tell you that being at the opening ceremony and hearing 40,000 people singing Hatikwa was just as special, just as memorable experience for me. And, and I want to thank all of you for being here, for your support, to really provide this opportunity to so many others to experience what I've experienced on many of my trips to Israel. Thank you. Ron Carter got involved with Maccabi USA over 30 years ago, and he has never looked back. Ron is very headstrong. A leader, tenacious. Loving. Focused. Proud. Very easygoing. Consistent. Childish delight. Stubborn. A great family man. Committed. Teddy bear. That's Ron. He's a fun guy to be with. Ron has a big personality. Ron is the kind of person who draws people to him because he always has a positive attitude. He likes to laugh. He likes to joke. He has a good sense of humor. And for a grandfather, he's exceptionally young at heart. Always smiling. Uh, but always, always giving me a corny joke. I mean, uh, if you look up the word corny, you'll see his face uh, in, in a dictionary. And by the way, I'm looking at a picture of his face at the invitation, and that definitely was photoshopped. Hey, he's a nice guy, and no doubt about the fact that he's uh, uh, running uh, with nice uh, uh, leadership skills. When somebody is like that, it's quite easy for me to work with him. I mean, obviously, I've been involved for quite a few years with Maccabi worldwide, as indeed Ron has. And 
Ron is, in English words, a true Jed. Ron is an ideal uh, leader in Maccabi World Union. You know, it's a man uh, with a great uh, pride about his affiliation with the Maccabi World Union and leading uh, Maccabi USA. I admire most about uh, Ron that he's a great partner in our relationship of building a strong organization. Uh, he understands the roles of our volunteers. He's a great team builder. He is a leader who thinks not only in how to improve the movement, sino como traer la mayor cantidad de judíos a Israel. Milan has a great passion for the program and a great love of the program and uh, for that reason it's infectious when you work with them. We started on this Maccabi journey together. Uh, I started about two years ahead of him, I just needed to say that. He started as a co-worker, but the more that we worked together and, and were involved in the same project, the more he became a friend and a confidant and somebody I could always count on. Ron, I'm sorry I can't be there at the event that's honoring you and it's a well-deserved uh, event for you and you, you deserve it and you've earned it over the years. You've been very supportive of everyone who come across your path in this uh, number of years of, of activity in, in Maccabi and I hope you will be still working with us for a number of, of years to come. I'm very proud that we have leaders like you who work so tirelessly for our cause, and not only our cause, but for uh, also for, uh, for Israel. We are really proud of, of the work you, Ron, are doing. Ron, congratulations. It's been a long and wonderful road together leading up until tonight. Nobody deserves this honor more than you do, and I'm certainly aware of all of the hard work you put in to make it such a big success. You've been awesome in so many ways, in building our family, in combining our four children into a cohesive family where they became best friends, and somebody I love with all my heart. You are a very special person. That word is thrown around so much, but you are very special that to the point that Maccabi USA is blessed to have you as its president. And knowing you and loving you has enriched my life. And I love you, Ronnie. You deserve this, this honor tonight. And here's to another 30 years of traipsing around the world with Maccabi. I know if the world had more Ronnie Karnas, uh, the Israelis would feel even more secure in their future. So thank you, Ronnie, on behalf of my child, my grandchildren, for helping create the chain, this phenomenal chain of Jewish history. Your commitment to Israel, to the Jewish people, and to Jewish continuity is legendary. Your leadership, has set the standards for those who follow. Your passion for our mission and our projects have inspired the rest of us to work even harder to ensure that every Jewish athlete who is capable and who is qualified can experience the magic of Maccabi. Your lifelong service to the Maccabi movement and to the ideals of Maccabi have enriched the lives of Jews in Israel in the U.S. and around the world. Ronnie, our lives are brighter because of your friendship, and the world is a better place because of you. So come on up. And this says, the righteous person is an everlasting foundation. And it's presented to Ron Carner in grateful recognition 
of his selfish dedication. This is really heavy. And leadership. And today's date, Maccabi USA building Jewish pride through sports. Nobody deserved this more than Ron A. I want to make it perfectly clear, and I really mean this. This night is not about Ron Carney. This is a night regarding Maccabi USA and what we do and who we are. Yes, 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 yes. If it, if it helps the organization by, by my being honored, that's great. No problem. I have no problem with that. But this is an, an event for Maccabi USA. That I want to assure you. And to my Jerusalem maiden, my wife Talia, my loving, beautiful, and ta talented wife, Thank you, my darling, for following, following me when I need you, and thank you for leading the way for our life. Thank you very, very much. I'm going to tell a few stories, but very short. But first I wanted to say, well, what is it that we do here at Maccabi? Why are we doing what we do? Through sports, and you've heard it before, they've been talking about it all night, we create within our athletes and their families, not just the athletes, a basis for Jewish pride and understanding of the state of Israel and its importance for every Jew, not only Americans, but for worldwide Jewry. They come away from our many Maccabea programs in Israel and our worldwide sports events with an amazing feeling of emotion, and we give them that opportunity to experience those emotions. It is fascinating what sports can otherwise accomplish and the existence of teamwork within those sports program, programs further stimulates this awareness. If I had time, I could further tell you about the stories that Lenny Kreislerberg was saying before about the life-changing experiences that I have heard from so many athletes throughout these last 30 years. Do I have to tell you how important this is, especially in this most horrible times for our people? But ladies and gentlemen, I want to tell you about that, what, we are, what we are really about. And what we're about is so much more than sports. I have to tell you a story regarding the other events that we are involved in. We run the Maccabea every four years, and within that cycle, we run the Pan Am Games and we run the European Maccabi Games. And in 2011, July thereof, we held the European Maccabi Games in Vienna. Vienna. There was the largest concentration of Jewish, of Jewish people in Vienna for those games since the Holocaust. So it was important for the United States to participate as high a level as, as we possibly could. And as it was important for us to bring as many people as we could. And I couldn't talk, as, talk to the people. Too many people said to me, I don't want to go to, 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 to Austria. I don't want to be with those people. You have to go, I said. You have to be there. You have to participate. We have to support the Jewish community in, us, in Austria. So we went. We brought a delegation of 250 people, small for us. And where was the opening ceremonies that night? In that very same municipal square, that very same municipal square, where you've all seen the black and white uh, film of Adolf. At the night when they announced Anschluss, the annexation of the willing Austrians to be an annexed by the state of Germany. That ve very same square, we held our opening ceremonies, where back in 1938, when he announced Anschluss, hanging from that big balcony, I'm sure lots of you saw that, hanging from that big balcony was that huge Nazi swastika. So there we all were in July 2011. 22 nations. The United States marches in. The rest of the other nations march in. The Israelis march in. 
the president of the country, Heinz Fischer, stands up and speaks to the 10,000 people in the audience and apologizes to the Jews. Apologizes, that's exact phrase, he apologizes. The mayor of Vienna apologizes to the Jews. And as with 10,000 people are standing there, they play Hatikva and hanging from that same balcony, that exact same balcony, is a 65-foot Star of David, the, the flag of Israel. That's what we're about, folks. That's what we do. We're much more than just sports. We're giving them the opportunity, as I said before, we're giving them the opportunity to share the emotion so they learn who they are. And then four years later, in July, just nine months ago, July of 2015, where were the European Maccabi Games held this time? Berlin, Germany. Berlin, Germany. Unbelievable. Fantastic. I had the opportunity to sit with the, with the dignitaries, to watch the opening ceremonies. No way was I gonna do that. No way was I gonna be involved by, by, by watching it happen. I had to be there. I wanted to march in. I wanted to march into that very same stadium on the grounds where the, in the, the Olympics of 2000, excuse me, in 1936. The Jews, Marty Glickman, Sam Stoller, were not allowed to run in the four by 100 meter run because Avery Brundage, the president of the U.S. Olympic Committee, did not want to embarrass Adolf Hitler by having two Jews beat the German team. So we marched in and all I could think of, and some of you have heard this and maybe read about how I felt about it, I could not stop my expletives as I was marching in. And today, folks, by coincidence, is the 127th anniversary of the birth of that SOB. He was there, and we were there. All those years later, that's what we at Maccabi do. That's why we're important. And Marty Glickman, a Madison graduate, Marty Bloom, I'm sorry he didn't go to Midwood, a Madison graduate, Madison High School graduate from Brooklyn, New York, who lit the, the torch at the opening ceremonies in July of 2011, Marty Glickman's daughter. That was a very, very moving moment. And that was important to us. Okay, so let me just end up with a, a couple of things. For me, devoting more than half my adult life to this worthwhile cause has, has enriched me way beyond that which I ever expected. Not only have we accomplished by building Jewish pride through sports, but what I got out of these past 30 years, wonderful worldwide friendships from people who love you for who you are and not what you can do, with them, do for them, that is a blessing. And to my grandchildren, I know you're around here somewhere. I want to impart that it is less important who a person is by the office one might hold but more important of what you are, what is in your heart, what is in your soul that makes you a good person in order for you to give back to your community and love every second of it. Though I would not classify myself as an overly observant Jew, I can tell you that I have gathered a great pride in my Jewishness and this I have accomplished with Maccabi USA and through the medium of sports. Go Team USA, thank you all for coming. And that's our coverage of Maccabi USA's gala event in this beautiful space you can see behind us. It was really wonderful to learn more about all the Jewish athletes from around the world who participate in the Maccabiya and all that Maccabi USA does to bring American athletes to Israel. 
Thank you so much for joining us on JBS. We would be pleased to send a complimentary DVD of this program to anyone who wishes to support JBS, the Jewish Broadcasting Service, with a tax-deductible gift of $36, double high or more, to the nonprofit organization Jewish Education in Media. Simply visit the JBS homepage and click on the Donate button to make a donation by PayPal or your credit card. And please, indicate the program for which you would like a DVD. Or you can send your tax-deductible check made out to GEM, to GEM, Post Office Box 180, Riverdale Station, Bronx, New York, 10471. And again, please remember to indicate which program you would like to receive with our compliments. And we thank you for your kind support.